Hello, I'm John Madsen. Welcome to Building a Web Crawler. This is the third part in the series, and we're going to do kind of a reset. Um, I've got a lot of messages, mainly from students, which was kind of a surprise. Uh, they're using uh, my videos to build web crawlers for their uh, class projects or just to learn. And um, the, the methodology I was using was really just kind of, uh, uh, you know, fly by the seat of my pants, basically no planning. And um, so I wanted to take an opportunity to do a reset and basically show how um, it's done if you were to work as a professional software developer or software engineer and um, the, the whole methodology that goes with it. So um, the, the other two episodes, basically I just opened up the IDE and started programming. And um, yes, I've made a, a couple web crawlers before, uh, so I had an idea uh, where I was going with it, but um, you guys didn't. And um, so this, uh, this part three is really kind of a, a new part one. Um, and uh, we're gonna use a, uh, a methodology, uh, it's called the Test Driven Development, or TDD, and um, it's a pretty popular methodology for development. Uh, the, the idea behind it is basically to um, uh, develop all of your uh, your code in modules. So um, you, you have functions and classes, all of that stuff, and uh, a lot of the time there's a, the, a whole lot of dependency um, for a, a, a specific component to operate. So the idea behind uh, test-driven development is to uh, develop your components in a modular fashion that allows them to be more of a, a decoupled type system, um, So, which is a requirement uh, in order for you to do test-driven development. So basically you would uh, develop kind of a... Um, uh, uh, a, a class uh, function or set of functions, and uh, they won't actually run in the program. So, like the last couple episodes, I was basically testing it um, because I was running the real application. So, we'll be using um, JUnit uh, and do unit testing. So, as a unit, uh, this is where this decoupling uh, happens. So, uh, what you'll see is uh, functions created within um, classes. And those are designed specifically with zero or very low dependencies so that they can be tested as a single unit. So um, something that would uh, crawl, uh, like say using JSON, a function to, to crawl a document or get a document. So that would be a, a, a single function um, and a unit uh, with its except, exception handling. And so that would be tested as a unit. Then once you get the document, um, uh, something else uh, as a as a component or a use a, or a unit or a module to uh, do a specific type of processing, like extracting out all the anchors, and then other uh, components or modules or units once again to process each anchor to make sure there is a you know, fully qualified domain name and all of that stuff. And then when it comes down to uh, data access or your DAO layer. Um, Again, that would be uh, uh, done in modules and functions that could be tested uh, independently as a specific unit. So um, a, uh, you'd have a, a, a procedure or a, a function to do an insert. So, and you'd have a function that would uh, get a connection. So those would be uh, specifically components that would use JUnit uh, to unit test the connection, test the connection, um, if it's open or not, uh, I would pass or fail depending upon that. And um, then, okay, so now we know that the connection works. It's, it's a specific uh, uh, module in there. And then uh, to do an insert, you would use that connection uh, function or that module uh, as a connection and um, to call an insert uh, function. So whatever, if you're passing an object or something like that, like say, if like we plan on using the repository method, or uh, uh, sorry, the uh, the repository pattern, which are basically have your, your data access, 
your business objects, so like domains, URL, stuff like that. And then the repository kind of ties it together. So um, you can pass uh, your um, your object to the repository, like a domain. And then that would know how to process out whatever it needs to do to save it, whatever. Um, we'll, be, we'll be doing that. Uh, but yeah, so the idea is a, a modular code. You're not going to see a function that does 50 things or 10 things, uh, two or three at the most, usually one. And um, that's the way that we do it. So let's get started.